in Tanakh itself that a new covenant would come and the conditions under the new covenant would be very different from the conditions under the old covenant. Let me just read you from the prophet uh, Hosea. Hoshiach, is that how you say it? And he... Hosea. Okay, this is from Hosea 2, 18 to 19. In that day I will make a covenant with them, with the beasts of the field, with the birds of the air, with the creeping things of the ground. Bow and sword of battle I will shatter from the earth to make them lie down safely. I will betroth you to me forever. That means marry, by the way. Yes, I will betroth you to me in righteousness and justice and loving kindness and mercy. Now, I want to point out about that particular prophecy that the conditions that Hoshea, Hoshea, do I have it right? Uh, the conditions he's pointing to are conditions that are radically different from the conditions that were experienced under the Mosaic Covenant, or Brit, Brit, Mosaic, Brit. Anyway, in the Mosaic Covenant, the Jewish people couldn't even come into the presence of God. Only the high priest, the, 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 the main Kohen, could come in, and that was in the holy place only once a year. There was hardly any marriage. In fact, we saw at Sinai that the Jewish people, when God spoke to them from the fire of Mount Sinai, they were terrified, and they trembled. And they said to Moses, or Moshe, they said to Moshe, you just tell us what God wants us to do, we'll do it. But as for listening to this God, we can't do that lest we die. So what we find are conditions very opposite when, when, we, when we're talking about the New Covenant, very opposite of what we find under the Mosaic Covenant. Thank you. Okay, I'm afraid that you did not even touch the question that I asked you. I mean, you gave us something from Jeremiah, which I'm going to re respond to. This is what you said. Uh, but before I, I repeat your quote, I would like to ask a question. This is my question to you. If a person will come and show up in this room and tell us he's Eliyahu Anavi, Elijah the prophet, and he came to tell us about the salvation that is on the way, right? And we're going to ask him, Mr. Eliyahu, can you prove to us that you are Eliyahu? And he say, what do you mean? The Bible said that God said that I'm going to send you Elijah before I send the Messiah. That's a proof that I am Elijah. What would we say to this person? Would we waste a second with him? Okay. To come and take the text as the Christian church did and read and write a story based on some of the verses that appear in the Bible to match their needs and to match their goals, that's not a proof. That's not a scientific proof because I can do it just as well as they did. My, what you quote in Jeremiah, this is what it says over there. It says like this. It says, I'm going to bring the Jews from the land of the north and gather them from the lands. Blinds, cripples, frightening, giving birth. Large crowd will return here. This is talking about returning to the Holy Land from all the exiles. They will come with tears, and I will lead them. There are days who come, and I will renew the covenant with the Jewish nation, not as we received it for 3,300 years so far, but until this is going to happen, we are going to establish it this time for eternity. As you know, the Jews never, unfortunately, all of the Jews in the world did not stick to the laws. And many of them are not aware of most of the laws. But this time it will be for eternity, which will mean that this covenant that we are going to make it is not possible that it's going to contradict what we receive in the Torah. Why? Because in many places in the Torah, and I'm sure you heard it many, many times, 
The Torah says clearly, this is the Torah for you and your children for eternity. La'ad u le'olmei olamim means forever, for eternity. Many places in the Torah, the Torah warned the Jew not to erase one mitzvah from the Torah or not to modify the Torah in any way, and the punishment for that is execution. If a Jew adds any word to the Torah based on his own opinion or erase the letter from the Torah, something like this has to be cleaned from the nation of Israel. Now, my question to you was, if I'm coming and claiming in front of the, the crowd that Jesus is the Messiah and he has a divine power and I'm bringing in my book a quote that he warned his students, those were or, his original followers which are much better than the followers today, 2,000 years later. And he told them, be careful not to ever modify the Torah. And not only that, there's one thing I did not mention, but this is one more sentence that he told them. He told them clearly over there, everything the rabbis, Chazal, the sages, the Prushim, are telling you, you must do. So we find from here, not only that he admits that the written Torah is the truth of God, the oral Torah, which were passed from generation to generation, are 100% valid, and he warned his student is students not to change. Now we have a serious problem. Because as you already directed us that no one is allowed to change or to modify the Torah in any way, and if he does such a thing and teach to others, he will be cursed by God, we come to a series of problems that apply to him himself. Some of the things, first of all, it's like this. He comes and say, through the entire New Testament, he, call, he called himself like a regular human being. And not only that, when one time he say, son of God, the crowd wanted to stone him to death. And he said, what do you want? All the Jews call the sons of God. As the Torah say, Banim atem l'Hashem elokechem. You are the children of God. I chose you from all the nation to be my nation. So I'm only one of them. He did not answer, I am a special son of God, different than all the Jews. I am, what do you want from me? I'm one of them. But I'm nothing different than all the other Jews. That's my understanding from that. So my question to you was, just to make it sharp to the point, the point is instructions and everything you're going to speak in the next hour or the next year here, it's irrelevant because you are not following his instructions. And if he's your hero, and if he's the Messiah, and if your future depends on his hand, how do you not obey his will to his students, his instruction to his students? That was my question, but before I finish the question, I would like to ask you something that relates to it, and this is it. In the beginning of the book of Matthew, chapter 1, for those who do not know the story of the New Testament, this is how it starts. There's a person, Joseph, he meets a woman named Miriam, Joseph and Miriam, Joseph and Mary, Yusuf, it depends on how you want to call it, but it's the same person. Yosef, Joseph, he got engaged with Miriam, two Jews, two regular Jews. He got engaged, in the old days, the engagement used to take place, and a few months later, the chupa and moving together were taking place only a few months later. When he comes back later, he finds out that his fiance, remember, fiance is not today, like you give her a ring and it's over. Fiance means they already had kiddushin. He put a ring on her hand. She is already eshet ish, almost 100%, with some changes. And he comes back and he finds that she is pregnant, knowing he never touched her. When he asked the question, obviously she needed to save her life. Because in the old days they did not give reward to prostitutes or to people who would do something against their husband. So what did she tell him? God came to me and, and made me pregnant and this is from the Holy Spirit. And later of course the story is that he's going to become the Messiah. My question to you is like this. I'm going to read 
the beginning of the book of Matthew. Matthew is one of the four books. They have Matthew, John, Luke, and Mark. And obviously, if it's... May I just interrupt, Joseph? Yes, please. Joseph, you, you've already issued about five questions. Would you like to give me an 